interaction with uh, some of the dignitaries who were uh, uh, instrumental in uh, delivering uh, uh, research uh, outputs in different fields of computational science in, and engineering, as well as uh, some of them are experts in high performance computing. So I'll uh, uh, get their views on certain topics uh, uh, one by one, but let me first uh, uh, introduce you with our panelists. We have Professor Shubham Shuloy from Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. Professor Kapil Devnath from Electronics and Computer Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. We have Dr. Deepak Agarwal, Deputy Head, Heat Transfer Division, LPSC Stroke, and Deputy Project Director of Thermal Semi-Cryogenic Engine and Stage. Uh, we have Sri Ashish Kubelkar, Senior Director of HPC CDAC. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Wim Slechter, Director of Strategic Partnership at ANSYS. And uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Santosh M, Principal Technology Specialist, and uh, Avinash Padmappa, Lead Application Engineer. Um, Santosh will probably join in a while uh, the, uh, as our panelists. So uh, we'll first uh, uh, get their views on certain topics related with um, uh, scientific computing engineering applications and possible use of uh, HPC and uh, also uh, some commercial software uh, like ANSYS, how they can be coupled and can be utilized in their areas. So I'll uh, first uh, get a view from Dr. Agarwal uh, on that how commercial software like um, uh, ANSYS and others are beneficial for your propulsion for propulsion research in space mission, specifically in ISTRO. And also how ISTRO is leveraging HPC infrastructure to tackle challenges in problems related to propulsion research and other space mission problems. Dr. Agarwal, if you can uh, enlighten us. Yeah, you are muted. Now you are able to hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes uh, good right. afternoon. I think thanks, Somnath, for inviting me for this uh, derivation. And yes, uh, if you talk about the space missions, uh, historically, space missions are designed using the conventional methods. Uh, people use uh, either the experimentation or the one dimensional tool for the design of system. However, in the last few years, that what we have seen in my uh, career in the last 15 years, the drastic improvement happened in the software industry. And uh, because there are multiple challenges, the ecosystem of the space industry are totally changing. And uh, earlier when we were launching a, a single flight or single mission in a year or two, currently we need to, uh, multiple launches we have to uh, put in a year. And there are a lot of new missions which ISRO is planning and are currently on, systems are on. Keeping that in mind, definitely from last 10 to 15 years, we have extensively started using the uh, ANSYS or many other multiple softwares, I can say. ISRO itself is developing multiple softwares and uh, either in the field of uh, fluid dynamics or you talk about uh, the structure dynamics or even in the electrical propulsion, plasma dynamics. We ourselves develop the software, however, we use extensive support because each and every time you need to develop your own software when the software has matured. Last 10 to 15 years, what I see in the industry has matured enough. And the normal uh, the problem which we can solve with the help of the commercial tools, we are we are really using that uh, opportunity and we are uh, utilizing that opportunity. Just give an example, uh, last few years back, I think if you see any space mission, uh, what you see is there is a different phases of the uh, space program. First is the design phase. Second come to a testing and development phase. Third come to the uh, actual launch uh, phase or the operational phase. When you come to the design phase, that time we we, we are doing or we, we do a lot of simulations, uh, uh, either in-house code, using the in-house code or the commercial tools. That time we will having a uh, time, we are used to have time to do the research. But when we come back to the testing phase or the operational phases, that time time is very crucial factor. And here only your second question or the helps us. The high computing software, high computing performance is giving a great help during the testing phase or in the operational phase. Just give an example uh, to put in a correct perspective. Few years back, uh, you as uh, ISRO is developing around 200 uh, class ton uh, that ton class semi engine. 
and we face multiple challenges or multiple uh, problems definitely problems are be there in each and every system uh, during the development phase and uh, i can say that thanks to the computing facility or super computing facility what we uh, we have envisaged and we developed uh, in our uh, lpsc uh, we could simulate multiple problems in a very short time and really the very encouraging results we got very good uh, outcome especially for turbo machine in the field using the ansys product and uh, we could solve the problem multiple issues we could solve in the very correct time timely manner uh, we are uh, using the tools for all the, our mission say if you go to gaganyan uh, there are a lot of improvement is happening uh, so uh, hpc is helping in a great way definitely but uh, uh, still i feel there is a challenges uh, because the uh, space industries the problems are unique and it is multidisciplinary in the nature uh, where we can't be fully dependent on the uh, softwares we we do our own validation for the tools before using any commercial software and uh, yes we are the understanding of the phenomena we are able to do uh, with the help of computing system now the quantitative results also we are able to produce uh, but still for a transient problem still there is a issues even we, after reaching to the this level of uh, high computing facility so yes there is i think uh, now they, as we already told uh, government has announced the new policy open players are there uh, from uh, private players an ecosystem of the space industry totally changing probably they cannot develop their own software because we have heritage so we will be using their heritage and uh, things while doing the simulations but i think these people have to use the commercial they have to more depend on the commercial tool and i especially request the commercial developer to focus on this area right now there are they, they focus on the aerospace but yes there is a things in the space side also which need uh, focus right now uh, correct focus so that that this tool can be really well utilized by the all the uh, now new players in this game yes thank you deepak uh, dr agarwal uh, follow up question on that that because we are talking about uh, popularization of hpc in different engineering fields so what was the experience in your organization when you have set up a new cluster and started working on large problems how was the learning path no, no i think i think extensively we see we, we got a very good benefit i can say uh, and the, the scale up is also very good uh, from uh, our uh, statistic point of view on three dimensional yeah, no, no, i'm asking about the learning curve how difficult L engineers usually find to work on large problems and uh, i i i can say uh, we are because uh, we are a very, uh, we are not a very big team and we are able to manage with the help of ansys okay. i can say uh, and and uh, with the online tutorial whatever is available thanks to your uh, what courses itself <laughs> we have taken the courses and uh, learning uh, but definitely uh, challenges are there when you start uh, newly this problem. okay thank you dr agarwal uh, on, on in the same line i'll uh, go back to uh, mr ashish kubelkar uh, who is instrumental in um, uh, disseminating hpc knowledge across the country uh, through national supercomputing mission he is uh, coordinating uh, initiative including four different nodal centers iit kharagpur is one among them in uh, offering several hpc related courses running running workshops throughout the year throughout the academic sessions and uh, looking into different uh, fields especially so that uh, the domain scientists can learn hpc and use uh, it for, for their own purpose so i'll uh, ask uh, i'll ask uh, uh, mr kavikubelka to basically enlighten us on that aspect that how nsm activities uh, is uh, helping in popularizing hpc in different application domains across india uh, thank you somnath uh, uh, nsm per se has got uh, four verticals as you would be aware that first one is uh, setting of the infrastructure like one that has been set up at uh, IIT Kharagpur Param Shakti we have uh, several such installations uh, already done and few more coming up and the second one is uh, making the hpc applications available on these systems so currently uh, what uh, as a part of the nsm activities uh, uh, we are installing the open source softwares like uh, yesterday in my lecture i had given the list Uh, which included domains like bioinformatics molecular dynamics uh, material modeling quantum chemistry cfd weather disaster management 
so these uh, uh, these applications are uh, are they come installed in the systems because they are open source and some of the institutes uh, they also have licenses to the commercial softwares uh, so what we do so our team does is uh, whichever institute has the license uh, for the respective softwares we install them on that systems so thus uh, these applications are available on the system and uh, as a part of the when the systems are installed uh, for the users from that uh, institute uh, we do our team also conducts uh, user trainings Uh, which gives them the head start in uh, using these applications and uh, what we have found is uh, there is i mean even if you do uh, a week course or a 15 days course uh, they uh, the best thing is to make uh, use of those applications uh, so once they start using it uh, they also discover the things and uh, then they learn and uh, at times we also conduct a follow up training programs and what happens is in these institutes the students they keep coming every year so it's a continuous process for research scholars and all uh, it's like and now uh, uh, once they get initiated they would use it for two years three years but for undergraduate and postgraduate students uh, uh, we uh, uh, we uh, uh, we have to keep uh, conducting these uh, programs and we also train some of the faculties there so that whenever uh, that's needed uh, Uh, we uh, uh, help them in uh, conducting those programs that that is the institution specific but uh, at the same time uh, uh, as you rightly said uh, we has nsm has a mandate of uh, uh, spreading the hpc temper across the country so uh, with the help of nodal centers uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, giving specific trainings like i your nodal center itself i think in the month of may we conducted a two day training program uh, with uh, which were about uh, simulations in general and then uh, based on uh, the feedback given we are conducting this uh, specific program uh, with uh, ansys so uh, uh, in this way uh, with the nodal centers and industry put together like the earlier program was one, one was with nvidia so there are uh, two ways of doing it one is like uh, giving them the basic knowledge uh, or uh, the science behind it those kind of basic trainings and other one are the specific trainings related to usage of certain softwares like this is a good example the ansys is uh, one good example where uh, uh, we are uh, 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 we are uh, I mean, there are so many users across the country and if we uh, like this program was i guess a more of a generic one where we touched upon various facets of uh, simulations that can be used in uh, some of the fields similarly we can take this forward and based on like we have a feedback so after taking the feedback if the participants need uh, some specific uh, in a specific vertical or there are some specific uh, um, requirements of the participants and we can check who have the 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 ones who we, uh, the majority of the ones we can take first and like this i think uh, we can take it forward so uh, to sum up uh, what we are trying to do is uh, it 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 becomes both ways that there are needs uh, that are put forward by the users and based on that we give trainings and secondly if when we partner with the industry they have a uh, a set of uh, tools that are available with them and if we can introduce the participants to them then they get to know what things are available and then uh, they start using it so that's the way uh, we are going about Thank you, Ashish sir. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, uh, go to Professor Shubham Suroi now. Uh, in academia, we usually work on problems which are fundamental in nature, but also simplified to some extent that uh, you really do not need large computational infrastructure. We try to do certain things which can be done in our own laptop or at best a lab, a lab server, etc. But Uh, Professor Roy has been involved in, in uh, several activities in which he is looking into uh, very, very large computing. So some are is involved in with railway research as well as turbomachinery research and others, uh, where he uh, looks into something close to a device level. And I'll I'll ask him to share his experience on that. That uh, well, what is. Uh, your experience on using hpc for these large scale engineering problems and uh, 
uh, what else do we need to do to go for actual device level simulations? Sir, you are not audible. You have to turn on your mic. Thank you, Professor Roy. Now, um, um, I am a professor of mechanical engineering and also I head this Center for Railway Research, which does research for uh, vehicle transport, both road as well as rail. Now, um, we uh, are using, for my research, I'm using open source softwares like uh, OpenFOAM, uh, but I found out that when we do complex engineering problems, where industry is involved, so we have to use, you know, for such complicated geometries, you know, we have to use ANSYS. And that is why we also extensively use ANSYS for such problems. Like uh, one of the problems that uh, we are working on is lithium ion battery simulation for uh, the electric vehicles. Now, there are uh, challenges. Uh, one of them is to find out the heat generation inside a lithium and battery during charging as well as discharging. Uh, so we can do approximate analysis, but uh, it is uh, quite challenging to do the uh, full simulation with using electrochemistry. So initially we were using Star CD battery studio, but later on, we shifted to ANSYS. Maybe we'll have to take more help from them. But uh, these uh, these kind of simulations, um, the, unless one uh, either one has to have very, very detailed knowledge of the electrochemistry or if we, one does not have uh, you know that kind of knowledge because people from different domains uh, want to do this kind of simulations. Say I coming from the heat transfer uh, experience background will not know so much of electrochemistry that I can write codes from the beginning and do the simulation. So that is why there are softwares available. One of them is Star CD and one of them is ANSYS also, which is able to do this electrochemistry very well. So that is one thing. Then after you did the heat generation, we are able to predict. Then we can do the standard uh, uh, simulation of conduction, convection, phase change to do the uh, packaging for the battery. Okay. So we have been successful in uh, doing this work, you know, thanks to uh, ANSYS and we are able to uh, make the manufacturing drawings and give it to the uh, manufacturer to make the packaged uh, battery system. So that is one, I, I say, a good use of uh, ANSYS that uh, we have done. Another thing that we have done is we are also working on these are a little bit not the regular areas and we are also working on high power density electric motor drives, you know, the design of electric motors. So there uh, we are working on permanent magnet motors as well as switch reactant motors. These are very high density power density motors. They also have cooling problems. So even after we design the motor, we have to have cooling solutions. For designing the motors, ANSYS already has uh, very good tools like MotorCAD. It uh, it helps us to do the real design, a design at a level which can be given to a manufacturer to make. It is not uh, uh, only fundamental research. It is it has to be designed and made. So that is a different kind of uh, uh, level of uh, simulations than one has to do. So we are able to do that using uh, ANSYS and we have successfully designed uh, uh, such uh, electric motors and we have given it for manufacturing. Now, um, uh, recently we got this motor cat. It is a uh, normally this motor cat does not come with the regular uh, academic research version. So we had to request ANSYS and so they gave us motor cat. But uh, you know, they, uh, ANSYS has tools, very special tools for the industry, which makes the uh, initial integration of the CAD with the uh, you know, actual simulation possible in a short time. But that these tools do not no normally come with the academic research license. That is what I saw. And if you don't have that, it takes a lot of time to do the real design. So this is one aspect we have to take up with ANSYS. 
and uh, the hpc uh, being available is really helpful but what i found find is that the cat design uh, you know when we do and then we have to integrate into the ansys for doing the simulation that part cannot be uh, done in our hpc because our hpc do not allow the uh, the graphics part because it is mainly for the computer so what we do is we do the cat in our workstations which has good graphics and then when we do the computation we shift it to the hpc that is how we have been working again when we have to do visualization we have to bring all the data back to our workstations and if it is large data it sometimes becomes difficult and then we continue with the uh, simulations and we are also doing vehicle aerodynamics uh, for uh, train simulations these are large simulations that we have to do now we are also doing vehicle crash worthiness studies uh, so initially we were using ls dyna and for putting dummies inside the uh, car or the train we were using medimo but that i don't know whether now uh, the ls dyna i i think ls dyna is now we also have it in the academic license i will find it out so then it will be very good we all our sim crash simulations will be able to do in the hpc because uh, we really need to do uh, we have a small hpc which we are using but if this ls dyna is made available in our hpc then we'll be able to do this crash simulation which requires lot of computing you know, facilities so overall i would say that uh, you know ansys has been very helpful uh, in doing uh, in several aspects one is they have very well validated uh, algorithms which are very well tested um, then the uh, one of the uh, very good things is that the Uh, grid generation is much easier because i use open form also uh, but uh, uh, grid generation where you can uh, uh, modify the bad grids and inter and intervene that is much easier in uh, uh, ansys compared to this open source softwares uh, but uh, an another aspect is that uh, ansys has facilities to repair the cad drawings if you want to go into manufacturing you have very complicated cad designs and for which we have to do real simulations so repairing cad drawings is a big challenge and that ansys has provided uh, a tool called space claim i don't know whether it comes with the uh, the academic research license probably now it's included that is very helpful without that we will not be able to do industrial designs so these are the various aspects in which you know ansys has been very helpful but one thing i would say that we faced lot of difficulties in using fluent in uh, initially in in the hpc uh, we are able to use open form very easily because the latest version of ansys especially fluent has lot of features to probably use the infinity band in a very efficient way so initially Uh, we had lot of difficulties in using uh, the infinity band uh, many a times what would happen is you would start our uh, simulation and then after about say uh, half an hour or one hour it would slow down nobody could figure out what happened i think ansys we have to take the help of ansys to figure out you know uh, and ask them to do some validations they do extensive validations i know they 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 do lot of they supply these softwares to indian railways and uh, they do the validation for them when they install the softwares because it is a commercial you know, establishment but here we should also take their help to do the validation when they install the um, ansys so that we don't have to face you know we were going here and there then finally you know and then we had to download go to foreign hpc websites find out how what is the command that fluent is being used to use fluent then we have to implement it so slowly i'm sure uh, because it is new we will also have those websites where we will ask ansys and they will give us proper guidance so it took us lot of time to really use the infinity band to uh, make uh, ansys work the way it should so i think that we would we should take the help of ansys to validate you know whenever they make the installation so that is one thing but overall uh, i have my experience is very good 
uh, I mean, many of the problems that we could never have done, you know, uh, if we did not have the HPC, we are able to do now. But uh, I, we have to make sure that the HPC is utilized fruitfully. I mean, uh, when I was doing my PhD abroad, they were always charging CPU time. Even if they did not take money from us, you, you have to charge. Otherwise, what happens is people misuse. Even if requires maybe uh, 100 CPU, we will put 200 CPUs because it is free. So if you charge, so there has to be a mechanism to charge so that and uh, we don't have to pay actually. And you must if there is uh, these are we have uh, funded projects and they, we must be made to pay actually and then they should be given uh, preference. You know their uh, job should run faster. So such a mechanism must be you know must be evolved. And that is my you know that is my thinking. You know, that way they, it gets utilized much better. Thank you, sir. Regarding the last point, we are actually also thinking in the same direction uh, on Param Shakti and uh, so Because what ANSYS has done is late, late, I mean, lately in the latest versions, they have done something uh, so that it, it runs better in uh, this infinity band. So unless we know them properly, we uh, cannot put the right switches. That is the problem. Uh, there was a discussion today morning also uh, regarding uh, Mr. Vanu's talk that if uh, some of the tutorials or boot camps can be provided by ANSYS regarding... Yeah, they should do a validation. They have validation problems. Yeah. Oh, okay. Validation Along with it should be benchmark. They have extensive... That is why ANSYS sells at such high price. Extensive validations they have with experiments. Uh, they have validated them and they have benchmark problems. We must... They must run it and make sure that it is running to the fullest, uh, you know, uh, at proper scale. No, also also for students running at different institutes, yes. if we can get certain uh, guideline from ANSYS that yes. uh, how this software should run on, uh -huh. uh, uh, say, on uh, hybrid mode or on multi-course, so uh, yes. what should be the right switches, what should be, to be done. Yes. Then is the we are also yes. discussing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, also, sir. some guidelines should be given to the students. Say, for example, it is not always, you know, uh, I may run my job faster using large number of CPUs. Okay, but if there are large number of users, maybe we have to restrict. We may have to uh, use uh, maybe per, per core, maybe we have to tell the minimum you must use uh, maybe uh, one gigabyte or, you know, five gigabytes. Some guidelines should be given. Now, otherwise, it is free for all. And money must be charged. I mean, it is funny money. Nobody has to actually pay, but that no, feeling we, comes. We do have a virtual currency rate right now. Yes, yes, it has to be implemented. Uh, nothing is free in this world. So, uh, and that you. feeling must come with the students. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'll go to Dr. Uh, Will Sledgeter now. Uh, he has uh, given a very interesting talk yesterday uh, uh, regarding his HPC usage for large problems. So, again, I mean, probably it's a repetition, but some repetitions are good for learning. The, so, what what are your experience on HPC for large scale engineering? So, uh, you have conducted a large, a large survey on HPC usage for simulations. You, some of that you have already showed yesterday, but I said, like, some, some things. Uh, this reputation will be beneficial for us. So if you can summarize some of the key learnings and uh, mm -hmm. what, what was the most important factor in that? Because Professor Roy also uh, highlighted on the fact that using ANSYS in different fields and their difficulties, uh, if you go for HPC, what are the issues, etc. So wh what is the result of the survey that you have conducted? What are the key findings? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Professor Roy. Yeah, you, you, you're right. We, we've indeed conducted a large survey on the usage of HPC for simulation, and, and I believe we we had about 700 or 800, almost 800 respondents in total to that survey. And actually, the the majority of the respondents were uh, R&D engineers, yeah, and researchers. And um, 
coming back to your question, what stood out most, I, I recall a few a few findings. Um, for for example, more than uh, more than one fifth of the respondents, yeah, reported actually that their most frequent simulations are overnight, yeah, are overnight runs. So taking more than than nine hours to complete, um, and that that implies. Yeah, uh, that actually a very large portion of our users uh, simply have to wait yeah, till the next day uh, for the simulation results. I find that still quite striking because I mean I, we all know yeah um, that hardware is getting more powerful, software is taking advantage of the latest technologies, and we hardware is getting better accessible also through yeah uh, data centers and cloud. But that, that stood out also. Uh, what I also remember is that um, I think it was about a one third or so, one, one third of it, uh, of the respondents said that uh, they, they limit the model size and reduce the physics in simulation models, yeah, uh, due to turnaround time limitations. They always reduce the model yeah, uh, size or let's say, don't use the scale resolving uh, yeah, turbulence model, but just a round model, uh, while that may still be required, just due to the fact that it would otherwise take too long. Yeah? And, and, but as a consequence, yeah, and that's also what, what became very clear in the survey, that it has a negative effect on the quality yeah, of, of simulation results. Um, I, I believe that it was even shown that about one fifth uh, uh, stating that limiting the complexity of the model uh, or reducing the details in the model resulted in um, in 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 yeah in less useful results yeah in less accurate results than they were aiming at so um, less um, yeah I mean lower quality results I find that also striking because yeah I mean I mean you can do a lot of simulations but if they are not accurate if you have to yeah, balance that with your uh, 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 run times. Um, I think it's not a uh, it's not a good thing in itself. Um, I think also what what stood out is is in relation to the the current COVID. Yeah, the um, of course also with the the whole economic environment. Yeah, the economic turmoil caused by 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 the pandemic. Um, but that's even despite the pandemic, yeah, uh, less than one tenth of the respondents indicated that um, they were going to cut the budgets, yeah, on HPC enabled simulations. Yeah, one tenth said, okay, we, 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 due to the new COVID whole situation and the economic turmoil, we're going to cut costs here and cut bu budgets on that. So I think that demonstrates that organizations clearly continue to invest in HPC. They appreciate the value yeah, uh, it will bring to them for improving simulation results and ultimately increasing their yeah, pro productivity, so to say. So um, I think that stood out. Um, no, and of course, may, maybe a last thing is um, is yeah that that cloud also becomes a more important uh, deployment model yeah, for accelerating simulation times. Um, I believe it was over a quarter or so. Quarter indicated that the use of yeah, um, uh, some kind of form of cloud, yeah, either public cloud or so software, let's say vendor managed uh, solution. Uh, was was considered as an um, as a way to reduce uh, um, um, turn turnaround time limitations, so to say. And uh, so I think th these stood out most, uh, Professor Roy, uh, to me out of the survey. And I hope these kind of insights are also of interest to uh, to, uh, to to our audience uh, today. Uh, thanks. I, I have a follow-up question. Uh, actually, I thought of asking this question to Santosh, but uh, somehow he couldn't make it. Uh, so, what what is the uh, use of uh, I mean, when we talk about a lot of people even during pandemic work from home mode, etc., using HPC infrastructure, etc. 
in how uh, ANSYS uh, is can help is helping them. What is the use of ANSYS HPC in in, in this this phenomena? As well as uh, there, there is something called ANSYS Cloud, I, I heard, uh, which which is probably a futuristic development by ANSYS. So if you can uh, uh, say something on that, ANSYS HPC and ANSYS Cloud and how mm -hmm. they popular. Yeah, right. No, that's a good question. I mean, clearly, as I mentioned, yeah, the pandemic, we, we, we clearly believe that this the crisis, although it's extremely unfortunate that it happened and, and that we are still in a situation, but it, it, it definitely accelerated the shift yeah, to, um, uh, let's say, to digital and, and even to shake up yeah, uh, the, the entire landscape, the business landscape. There's no question that the future of engineering will entail the need for simulation and the need for high performance computing, yeah, either on premises or um, off premises in the cloud. Um, and, and the future of engineering will also clearly need to be supported yeah, by AI and ML yeah, as the ability to handle also large uh, data sets as well and so on. So there, there is clearly um, an intense focus also at ANSYS on delivering HPC performance and capability to provide yeah, um, the level of fidelity that is required, the insight people need. And, uh, and I'm also happy to hear uh, the input I got on, yeah, on the projects being run on the, on the, yeah, from my previous um, speakers. Uh, also, the good input from my uh, first, uh, the previous speaker on how we can still improve it for for our audience, in particular in regard to students. Um, but but as I said, yeah, on, on, on cloud, there is clearly it's becoming an emerging platform. Um, so we started off actually by supporting our flagship products, yeah, like mechanical, like fluent, and the electronics desktop through Ansys Cloud. Yeah, and um, but we've extending that support with other applications like discovery, yeah, for doing real time simulations with SPIOS for optics simulations with CFX for turbo machinery applications, and I can tell that cloud will uh, and Ansys Cloud will be the backbone yeah, for cloud based simulation tools and solutions in the area of 5G, uh, AI, autonomous. Yeah, autonomous, autonomous driving and so on, where we will quickly expand our footprint in yeah in in the marketplace here. Um, so um, I can give a few examples. Um, uh, for example, vehicle uh, vehicle manufacturers are, are clearly under pressure yeah, to develop safe, uh, cost-effective ADAS yeah, and automotive driving technology. Yeah, and and for the traditional automakers, yeah, it is really a race <laughs> for the market share. Yeah, and for new mobility companies, time to market is 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 a make or break uh, factor. Yeah, so with so many technical barriers between yeah modern vehicle systems and full automation simulation, yeah, is necessary. Yeah, I mean, needless mentioning saying here, but again. Um, reiterating to solve really these critical design challenges yeah, being faced in the area of autonomy, system definition, hardware development, even software development, yeah, you know, autonomy. So I can tell that ANSYS simulation software um, can help these engineers and researchers yeah, um, to actually solve problems yeah, in, in a shorter time frame, of course, but uh, also, uh, where simulation uh, can be used for yeah, uh, helping um, uh, the software development yeah, to generate more reliable codes yeah, and, and, and demonstrate safety standards, uh, compliances, and so on. So, ANSYS Cloud will be moving in that direction too, yeah? will be the backbone for these type of simulations as well. Yeah? And then, of course, in 5G, uh, I can continue. Yeah, but I think this will, um, yeah, will remain a very, very strategic yeah, deployment model for us. It's emerging, and um, and uh, I'm sh I'm sure you will hear lot lots of new developments from from Ansys and and partners.
uh, on this uh, as well moving forward. So thanks for the question. I hope I answered okay. the question. Uh, thanks. Yes. Well, I'll uh, go to some of the applications now and what are the expectations on uh, those applications on uh, using HPC and uh, what is the current standing. So I'll uh, request Professor Kapil Devnath uh, to tell about uh, role of HPC in uh, optical simulations in today's state and what are the future businesses. Uh, okay, so I think uh, Dr. Uh, so Mr. Avinash has talked about the one side of optical simulation and this uh, illumination, how to simulate those illumination uh, problems and uh, imaging uh, using HPC. So there is another slide which I was also discussing with Mr. Robinash uh, regarding this integrated photonics, which is a relatively new area, uh, which is uh, gaining quite a bit of interest nowadays. Um, so in terms of uh, fundamental study in photonics, uh, for example, electromagnetic waves, of the behave with different medium um, and then also the device aspect. So currently uh, in my group, we do not do much of this uh, high performance computing, but we, we are feeling the need to go for this kind of uh, computational facility when we want to uh, design some uh, devices, some complex devices. So if we look at the fundamental study of light, then we can talk about ultrafast photonics where we do chaos analysis, uh, dynamics in ultrafast laser, uh, nonlinear photonics. So all these studies require very uh, large computational facility. Um, if we go into uh, say study of the random medium, say for example, atmospheric turbulence study of beam propagation, so for example, free space communication. Uh, whereas uh, where the atmospheric turbulence pl uh, plays an important role. So in that kind of studies, normal desktop computer will not be uh, will not be sufficient. Uh, for our uh, particular research that we do, I'm, I work in mostly in the device side of uh, photonics. So for example, let's say device optimization. So currently we, we try to do all the simulation in 2D so that we can get a better turnaround in terms of time, but uh, if we if we need to uh, simulate a real device, we need to go for a 3D simulation. In that case, the time becomes a uh, restriction. Uh, and when we say, suppose we want to design uh, do a device optimization, I talked about it last uh, yesterday as well. So when we need to do some device optimization, say for example, uh, solar cell optimization, there are meta surfaces optimization. Then uh, there is one area which is called programmable photonics. So in that case where you have multiple uh, photonic components integrated together. So if you want to simulate such complex and large devices, then um, I mean HPC becomes uh, a choice. I mean, not a choice, but um, I mean, we have to go for this kind of high performance. Um, then another area which is also gaining interest is this uh, neural network, but not based on conventional software based neural network, but hardware neural network using uh, photonics which I also kind of work a little bit. Uh, so there also we are finding, uh, so at this point we are doing a 2D simulation. Uh, so then we will find a, a disparity in terms of uh, fabricated device and simulated device. So if we, for that, if we can have access to HPC, to 3D simulation for this kind of optimization problem, um, that can be very beneficial. I think from the from the photonics and optics point of view, I can I can definitely say that uh, access to high performance computing would be quite beneficial. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Devna. Uh, I'll, I'll go to Mr. Avinash now on uh, uh, autonomous vehicles. What is the role of HPC in developing applications like autonomous vehicles? Um, thank you, Professor. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, as I was presenting, I mean, I, I, mean, uh, I was the last presenter, so I, I covered um, most of the points. But uh, uh, what's most important uh, in the current scenario is basically uh, the way the, the companies are uh, moving towards, uh, like globally or even in India, uh, it's it's equally picking up in the uh, in, in the. In the sense of uh, the global, I mean, capture market capture. So um, the first point is like electric vehicle uh, brings in uh, a, a big differentiation, and uh, the way Tata is positioning their vehicles, and uh, also they were able to make um, one one lakh 
vehicle sale in a very short span, span of time. And it's the same thing which we are also seeing with uh, the other vehicles. And um, usually these are the vehicles which will have their new platform, new vehicle, new development. And uh, these technologies will be um, adopted much earlier into that. So the reason of bringing this um, topic, uh, there are there used to be very few uh, car line projects um, in every company, or there are so many new entrants in the market. They were doing uh, some announcement uh, at the at the back end um, till they launch uh, one vehicle. Nobody knows how reliable there will be. So there is always a um, uh, risk involved in this, not to uh, having a clarity how these companies are evolving. So um, this is basically uh, increasing the pressure on every company to do more and more simulations much faster. So if they start speaking about uh, bringing up an autonomous vehicle uh, and if they don't come up with their, their model in next three years or four years, then they lose that interest built over, over a period of time. And um, then yeah, saying that there are three major developments which keep on happening with the company. So it could be uh, a machine learning like the perception algorithm itself, which is under continuous evolution. Uh, the object detection labeling is, is, is a is a big activity. Every companies are involved now in that level. And um, when there is a enhancement in, in the perception algorithm, everyone want to test those in the scenarios which are already been tested and they want to do it again and again. And there are so many other new scenarios also coming. And then we are talking about sensor. So there are so many new type of sensors coming into the market. Uh, they are they are getting much uh, better, uh, higher resolution, um, much more information is coming into it. And at last, we always take a look at the power management because mostly uh, we are talking about EV and we need so many sensors and um, everything should be uh, well balanced in terms of the power management. So I cannot have a supercomputer in a in a car and then talk about 300 or 500 miles of uh, distance cover. So then it has each sensor has to be uh, very efficient. So this is creating a lot of uh, interest in uh, doing the simulation at a much lesser time. And um, the effort we are putting in uh, as a company from ANSYS and uh, mostly the customers are also looking at adopting the solutions where they can do some automation and run the simulation a um, few hundred kilometers to a uh, few thousands of kilometers uh, every day. So um, HPC is a game changer for them and it's it's going to be a need for everyone uh, more and more in, in the coming days. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you very much. So, I mean, uh, we can see that there are uh, different uh, expectations on using HPC. One side is that delivering for industrial practices. The other side is academic research. And of course, there it's not that there are two disjoint platforms. There are handshakes between them also. And uh, it's good that we can bring people from uh, both ends together in, in this, this platform. Uh, but I'll uh, once more uh, ask panelists to uh, discuss about the uh, learning curve. Uh, so, what are the uh, expectations um, uh, from from um, academicians uh, uh, on HPC support and uh, other supports, and what are the, from from a company like ANSYS or or some other platform, some other experts uh, in HPC area. Along with that, it also comes that companies also need to know what are the requirements from the ed educationalist point of view. So I request uh, Professor Roy to uh, discuss on the significance of uh, efficient simulation techniques, HPC, etc. With, with a focus in academic research, uh, teaching and research. And then I'll request uh, Sri Kubelkar also to discuss on that, that HPC as well as uh, faster computing, efficient computing, both including software and hardware algorithms, etc. How uh, they can be brought into academic 
teaching as well as research, which also has a training component for students. Professor Roy. Uh, as I see, you know, this uh, at IIT Kharagpur, this HPC that we have, it is very recent phenomenon. Uh, so, uh, uh, unless we train our students to use the facility very efficiently, and it will take a little bit of time, uh, there is a tendency, now I find among many students I have talked with, especially undergraduates, they would like to use as many CPUs as possible, even if they get a little bit of you know, it runs a little bit faster. They never take into account the business aspect that it costs money. If I don't utilize every core of my CPU well, you know, when they go to a company environment, it will not be allowed like this. You know, there has to be a, you know, cost uh, b b benefit analysis, you know. So that's why the first thing, even in the year 1985, when I was uh, a student, uh, PhD student elsewhere outside the country, at that time also the, in the department for every student, they used to allocate some money. And what we would do is, we would do the initial simulations in our small uh, workstation or somewhere, and only the production runs we would do in the, uh, in the main computing facility. That way, the facility gets utilized properly. But if you make it free for all, what is happening is everybody is fighting for that few, you know, uh, thousands of uh, cores that we have. So first thing is that we must have some funny money. It's, nobody has to charge anybody, but at least that feeling should be there. Yes, if I don't utilize whatever money has been allocated to them, it is getting, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is going away. So that feeling must come, and we, the student must also be told that, you know. If this is the kind of problem, what is scale up, uh, you know, analysis that you will do so that, you know, when you go from uh, five CPUs to 10 CPUs, you know, how to do the analysis to find out that it's where it's really improving or not. And even if it's improving, you know, if you use more CPUs, you have to pay more. That that thing also should uh, be told. Because sometimes if the money is less, I will take a little bit more time and then, uh, I will uh, do the simulation. If there is another funded project, which uh, you know where there is money available and there is urgency, and then you pay real money and uh, get it done. So that kind of professionalism has to come in the HPC. I mean, uh, <laughs> otherwise, you know, probably now it may be fine. Not so many people are using it. And another thing is that I know that ANSYS lately, you know, when we use SLURM, we are using SLURM for submitting jobs, uh, I understand that I see some, some special features so that it can do the uh, the job uh, submission and the allocation of resources and uh, things like that. I don't understand so well, but I figured out that unless we use the proper switch, it is not giving me the full performance. And uh, and uh, so we have to take the help of ANSYS to uh, do some benchmarking using our own HPC, the way we have configured it, and maybe give some guidelines, and that we can put in our website, that if you are using Fluent, these are the uh, best possible. If you use one node, this is the switch that you should use. If you use multiple nodes, this is the switch that you should use. If you are using CFX, then this is how you should do it. If you are using, because ANSYS has so many varieties of uh, softwares, you know, it's a wonderful, you know, package that we have. Or if you are doing crash simulations, uh, maybe uh, so. Uh, so I think we must get some guidelines from them. So that would be very helpful. And if they see if you're for one or two days, if they will be their experts, they'll be able to figure out. They have some benchmark problems. If they run it and tell us that this is the switch that you should use, we'll be able to use it more efficiently. And I had to do a lot of searching from here and there and mostly from other uh, b b b HPC sites abroad where uh, it's clearly written as to, you know, b if you are using ANSYS simulation for these, these type of simulations, you should use these, these switches, but they uh, may not be all applicable here. This is the, f uh, I mean, the one is the, the charging money aspect, the other is to uh, take the help of ANSYS to know uh, I mean, what switches to use so that we are able to use InfiniBand uh, clearly and most efficiently. 
and we have to teach our students that they don't they should not just uh, you know just because hpc is available they should not fire jobs with uh, n number of cpus and this is how we can start at least because i know during my phd days there was a lot of restrictions my professor told me no no if you use too much of cpus my money will be over soon so there was so, so that way what you do is you try to use the resources more efficiently although nobody is paying for it and that has to be we have to put it here Okay, regarding got, management of the HPC. You got muted in between. Yes, yes. Uh, let us see what others have to say, those who have more experience in managing large HPCs. I mean, I'm saying even in 1985s, 8085s, I saw they were putting funny money so that it is so the, at, the, at that time IBM used to have this big vector computer, very expensive. But uh, I mean, everybody were not allowed to use it. And now things have become cheaper, but some some money should be charged. Funny money, I mean, not actual money. So again, whatever related is the uh, requirement of best practices. Yes, yes, that also has to be told to the students. Yeah. Best practices. So, uh, uh, Ashish sir, if you can uh, discuss on the uh, teaching and training part on HPC. Right. What are the yes, sure. So uh, uh, one of the uh, I feel one of the reasons uh, why the students should know about this is because uh, that can make them industry ready. Uh, that yes. is uh, like uh, right. Professor uh, uh, Professor uh, Roy said that uh, he is using it uh, whatever is possible for him, whatever he has got, he is using it. Students are using it. So if they use it during uh, while they are doing their PhD or their post graduation, then uh, it becomes easy for them uh, when they actually join the industry because uh, some of the simulation software, uh, uh, like for uh, like uh, 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 Dr. Deepak Karawala is also saying that they are using uh, ANSYS in the industry. So while uh, uh, like what NSM is making available the open source software because they are they don't have to pay for it so. Uh, in that sense, uh, uh, it's there, so we are making it available. But having access to such software will uh, definitely be useful. And uh, in the same, uh, uh, considering its significance, I would say that now that uh, the Paramvidya systems would soon be installed at the individual uh, nodal centers, uh, we can talk to ANSYS and see if so such softwares can be made available on the training platforms. So that that's uh, uh, Somnath. Maybe you uh, did not hear what I was saying. Is now that these Paramvidya systems are being uh, installed at at the four nodal centers. This may be a good idea to talk to them and see if we can get uh, mm -hmm. some. Uh, yeah, because it's there. They're like four node cluster. But at least how to use? Because many of these uh, uh, complex software, there are so many options in them and so many settings, as uh, Professor Roy was saying. So they need to understand that even if they may not be able to get performance out of it or solve big problems, but they will at least be able to understand how how to use it or the basic things they will know. That's my uh, input. Okay, thank, thank you. I'll, I'll go to the industry side now. Uh, uh, from uh, from Ansys, uh, Dr. Beam or uh, Avinash. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll ask them to uh, highlight on that also. But along with that, there are uh, there is a, another uh, point which uh, Dr. Agarwal has raised first that in the competitive environment when industry has to deliver, HPC can be really beneficial for uh, for them. So if you if you can uh, kindly little more highlight on that that. Uh, when you work for a very complex problem in a competitive environment, and especially for ISO, even if it's not a competition right now, it's something like that you have to deliver something in time. A mission will set up, and before that, you have to deliver. So, uh, I mean, so how do you envisage that uh, HPC will be beneficial? And again, talk, coming into the learning curve, 
what can be the helps from uh, NSA or on the training part you you, you are expect on that. So that they, your uh, in the industry side, your uh, personnel are well trained and they can uh, go and start working on HBC this large problems. Yes, Dr. Samnath, uh, question to me. Yes, yes, this question is for you. Yes, yes. Uh, so definitely uh, what I understand is the HPC has, uh, as I already told, the ecosystem is changing and as a space industry, we are not on the government organization. Many private players are coming into the picture. They don't have a vast experience to use their own codes. So generally, uh, the space system. So they have to be dependent on this particular aspect of commercial software with the help of HPC. When we talk about HPC, yes, the big systems are currently See, whatever it all depends how much how much computing node we ha are available see the systems are really very complex and we do we as an engineer we simplify the problem or we we, we take the subsystem level uh, analysis we do subsystem analysis and integrate it towards the final uh, objective of the rocket system or space system so as the it is nothing is i can say it is small for us or big Whatever is available, we are using. However, the problem, main challenge is what we face is doing the transient problems. Uh, the HPC is good when the computational domain size is very big and uh, there is a physics. Uh, with the physics also, we get the benefit. However, when the transient problems come to the picture with a simplified domain, even with the, uh, the grids are not very big, however, the uh, problems are multi physics or multi phase problem with the transient in nature. And we have to run a simulation to the number of hours at the launch time. Uh, from launch preparation to the uh, till launch. Uh, the time step size is minus six or minus five, the two phase flow or minus three. Uh, so we have to wait a long time to get the simulation. So they, they are the bottleneck what I feel in the, the software as, prof, as a professor or as an industry, both academy and industry has to work, software industry, to find a solution for the transient problems, which is which how to really get it improved with the help of HPC, which I am not really getting. Uh, the benefit we we are really facing challenges there. Otherwise, uh, as a uh, ISRO, we are planning to develop. Uh, see, currently we have in become survey space center something like 500 teraflop facility. A uh, liquid process system center we have 100 teraflop facility, and we are augmenting up to three beta facility in the coming year. That is also planned. Uh, uh, the problem is still uh, what I feel is uh, sometime we will face the challenges for the transient problems. We are not able to simulate a true transient. We do the passive static problem and then uh, give the solution. SPC is not helping in the big way for transient problems. Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Green uh, and Avinash can take this, uh, and, uh, these issues and discuss. Uh, but there are, both, there are a couple of issues. One is that from, from the industry part, how HPC can help on certain complex cases and if uh, especially let us consider the case of using ANSYS uh, in, in an HPC framework and if uh, there are certain difficulties what should be the way out how, and uh, the other part is that what uh, Ashish sir has mentioned that uh, if we can use uh, some of uh, if we can develop some of the courses or some of the training modules so what are the possibilities what should be the Load ahead I think we should have one course on distributed computing, you know, how to do it, some aspects uh, rather than the algorithms. Right. Yeah. So then I, I can try to answer that. Um, at least uh, try to answer it because you now coming back on what um, Agarwal mentioned, uh, Agarwal mentioned regarding transient simulations. Um, I mean, I, I cannot completely uh, understand the issue why transient uh, simulation, because I know I'm aware of a lot of industries that are actually using fluent and transient on very large HPC systems. And that's particularly the reason why they are using yeah, uh, HPC for those, uh, for those transient uh, fluent simulations. Um, so maybe Avinash, maybe, maybe you know, or we, we need a follow up at least, yeah, on our end to fully understand, yeah, the issue on Agarwal's issue regarding transient simulations. 
um, because that's that, that's not, that's not totally understand to me. What I what I uh, coming back on uh, Sir Roy's answer uh, questions regarding preference yeah, for let's say paying for HPC that students should feel yeah that uh, it comes with a cost. I think uh, that's that's definitely extremely good input. There are ways, obviously, to uh, have license preference uh, and, and set license preference in uh, in in the system in ANSYS. I'm only not 100% sure how we accommodate that for uh, in academia, yeah, for um, for academic.